All right, the next bit of news that I'm going to share with you is somebody who has shared this message with me. I've censored their identity, but I'll read out uh, the areas minus the identity of this person. So this is what this person has said. Hi, Louis Macedo. Okay, my name is whatever. And I was an expat in Dubai, but now in Europe working with human rights organizations that monitor migrant rights in GCC. I have this interesting but rather quite serious story about the UAE that you might want to share with your viewers that the General Ahmed Nasser Al Raisi, the current Inspector General of the Ministry of Interior in UAE, aka UAE's top cop. I never heard of him. I thought it was Khalfan? Dai Khalfan? No, that was when I was there. Okay, I don't know who's this guy. Okay, I'll maybe Google search and share it with you. Okay, UAE's top cop is nominated to be the head of Interpol in December. Well, okay. Uh, maybe that is why the Interpol is arresting people who have taken loans. Okay. Uh, from the UAE and runaway. Okay. Now this selection is completely silly due to UAE's poor record on human rights, even for non-violent crimes like torturing and forced disappearance for, of political descendants. <clears throat> and the second thing is this fishy nomination is Abu Dhabi's donation to the Interpol worth 45 million in 2017, 45 million US dollars, so that they are buying their way to make this guy their president for interval. Well, obviously, if you give such big amounts, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't mind keeping one of your representatives. Like, I, I, I guess this is a politics, this is a business, this is how it is. You pay millions of dollars. Uh, I mean, who wouldn't give you a seat? At least that, that's what I say. Okay. Uh, third concern is having a guy like him who participated in human rights violation undermines the integrity of Interpol as the UAE is known both for human rights violation, refer to Matthew Hedges' case, and also Dubai specifically being a mecca for money laundering and a hideout for corrupt people like Isabel Dos Santos of Angola or European drug trafficking who fled Costa del Sol and now are in Dubai. Okay, wait, there are many things here. Let me, let me analyze each one thing at a time. Um, for a guy like him who participated in human rights violation, integrity of Interpol, Dubai is known for, okay, refer Matthew Hedges case. Now, Matthew Hedges, I Google search, Matthew Hedges, if you Google search, I'm Google searching right now, Mr. Matthew Hedges, okay, arrest him, oh, yes, yes, this guy, okay, British doctorate student who was in United Arab Emirates for a two-week research trip, was arrested in Dubai International Airport on suspicion of behalf of the British government, okay. Uh, if you Google search his name, you'll get plenty of um, um, videos. Jailed in Dubai, Matthew Hedges is struggling to get over. Then Matthew Hedges says he was psychologically tortured. Britain, Matthew Hedges sentenced for life in Dubai, UAE prison. Uh, what does Matthew Hedges' case tell us about UAE, Al Jazeera? So there is plenty of stuff. I want you to do your homework and decide whether what he's saying is legit or not. I, I mistook him for another guy. Okay, uh, another uh, British guy who was, I think, owner of a football club or something. And he's also speaking about uh, Princess Latifa. So, okay, this is totally something else. So, Matthew Edges is this guy. So, ha have a read. And you tell me whether this guy is innocent or this guy is, you know, wrongly, whether he was wrongly imprisoned. And um, my big question is, why was he jailed in the first place? And if he was a bad guy? And then why was he left? Did they apologize? You know, there are so many questions. There. So if you have any insight into this, please let me know. Okay, so yeah, this part is right. The next one is uh, for corrupt people like Isabel Dos Santos of Angola. Okay, so when I Google search this one, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a normal guy like you. I don't know everything. So Isabel Dos Santos is an Angola businesswoman, Africa's richest woman and the eldest child of Angola's former President Jose who ruled the country from 1979 to 2017. In 2013, according to Forbes, her net worth had exceeded $2 billion, making her the first Africa's first US billion dollar billionaire. You billion dollar female, okay, whatever. Yes, there have been a couple of arrests that have been in Dubai. But the question is, okay, they did get arrested in Dubai. How did they enter the first place? I mean, you're talking of Dubai being the most secure, sophisticated, uh, modern place to enter if you have a criminal record it shows up on the screen so why were they not arrested so yes there are many questions here the fourth concern I have is observers have suggested that UAE, UAE uses red notice system to pursue financial debtors who generally would not be persecuted criminally in most jurisdictions 
and having a guy like Ahmed Al Raisi will be catastrophe because he will issue Interpol red notices like free supermarket vouchers which undermine undermine the whole of Interpol. Well, there is a, an aspect of a truth to what this person is saying. The reason being is, yes, if you do take loans and you run away, you will be arrested. Okay, you will be arrested. And this has happened to many people in many different countries. Okay, especially Western expats. Which is why many of these so-called social justice warriors, uh, whose name I don't want to take, they try to show themselves as they are protecting you, but they are actually targeting your tragedy and selling your information to newspapers and making per story they make around three thousand uh, British pounds or three thousand uh, dollars. I'm not ex exactly sure with the amount of money. You can just Google search in Gulf News and Kalish Times. One of them, the so-called social justice human rights uh, warrior. They sell these stories to make money out of them and then they take your case uh, and they profit out of, uh, you know, marketing your story at the same time, um, you know, while portraying themselves to be angels. So if, you know, for me, I personally don't mind you do this, provided you're transparent about it. So anyway, I don't want to digress from the topic. The main thing which I'm trying to say is, yes, this person, what this person says is right. If you do take an amount of money and run away, uh, you will have Interpol chasing you, especially if you're a Western expat. Okay, kindly look at the references I've sent you and I hope you can share this information with your viewers. And please take my name if you do in a YouTube video. But obviously, I do take out your name. So what were the links? The links that were sent to me, number one, exclusive. This is a telegraph. UAE police chief accused of presiding over torture of British academic running to be head of Interpol. The Telegraph has seen a campaign material for Major General Nasser Ahmed Al Raisi, who is thought to be one of the front runners for the job. Okay, so this is an article by the Telegraph. Then you have CarnegieDowment.org: How Emirati law enforcement, um, Emirati law enforcement allows kleptocrats and organized crime to thrive. So this is. Uh, Positioning UAE as it appears to be an alluring a destination for corrupt politicians, politically exposed persons, transnational organized groups, and US sanctioned individuals seeking illegal proceeds. Okay, so this is a really big article. Uh, it speaks about um, the UAE being a signatory in the UN, but at the same time, it breaks the rules. Uh, there's plenty of uh, stuff here. Huh? I'll tell you, if you go through it, it's a long, really long article uh, exposing UAE in terms of anti, you know, in terms of money laundering, in terms of protecting criminals, in terms of uh, having, uh, you know, uh, black money. So in conclusion, what it says here, I'll just read out the conclusion for you. It says in the last several years, UAE has taken some concrete steps to integrate into its criminal laws obligations that it has agreed to come under a number of international treaties, conventions, and resolutions. International cooperation by the UAE has moved beyond the signature and ratification phase into the implementation of practical training and cooperation in the spheres of terrorism, financing, narcotic trafficking, human trafficking, and cybercrime. However, there continues to be a hole in UAE's international cooperation efforts on money laundering and foreign corruption, as well as the smuggling of precious metals. The key to any change in this cooperation will be the Emirati law enforcement improved capacity, particularly in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, to enforce the 2018 AML and CTF law. The international community should closely monitor the new created FIU guidance to financial institutions on the filing of suspicious activity reports, as well as its cooperation with law enforcement. Perhaps its desire to improve perception of its international law enforcement cooperation, the UAE will be begin implementing best practices upon international money laundering investigations involving foreign corruption and bribery. Well, right now it has uh, just today, just sorry, yesterday it had um, the one MDB case where uh, you could say uh, uh, Goldman Sachs admitted of paying multi millions in amounts to Abu Dhabi. And then you have money laundering, which is a major scandal, which UAE still has to respond. And you also have uh, the scandal of that uh, UAE Minister of Tolerance, where he sexually assaulted um, that female from the Hayes Festival. So UAE is undergoing, I mean, pressure points from so many different angles. On top of that, it has its relationship with Israel, which 
has caused a furore in uh, the Muslim Arab world. So all these areas, including the uh, you know appointment of uh, this guy, this this police chief, I mean it kind of puts UAE in a very difficult situation to escape the spotlight. So anyway, you you tell me what do you think? Do you think um, this is you know uh, obviously it's good for the country for UAE it's good, but in terms of uh, global um, uh, perception and image. Do you think UAE can just get away with it and do nothing about it or, um, you know, is it um, going to be bad? So you let me know your thoughts. I like to keep it pretty neutral. I am a guy who likes to give you both sides of the argument. And like I tell you, um, the, you know, if you want to hear my view, I would say that UAE uh, is doing whatever it can to ensure that its economy runs. But the problem is when you start over-hyping things, when you start portraying yourself as uh, better than Tao or um, you, you, you disrupt the relationship, you betray your own people, the Arab people, the Muslim people to make uh, the deal with the devil, that is with Israel and uh, USA against the other Muslim states, I mean, um, you, can't, uh, you can't escape this. So anyway, let me know your thoughts. I leave it open to discussion and let's move on to the next bit of news.